Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, open this uh, Scientix conference. So uh, today I, I, I would like to share with you some, some reflections regarding the current and future STEM education challenges. And for sure, we, we have to start from the importance of digital skills. And we all know that digital society and the digital economy are now a, a fact of life. And we all know from the research that the innovative capacity of technology is conditioned by the level of digital skills of our population. More particularly, basic knowledge of digital technology is vital for daily life. And everybody agrees that digital skills are essential. And then we, when we look at our education systems, um, there are different approaches regarding computational thinking whether it should be part of a separate discipline or whether it should be integrated in other type of scientific disciplines. And one of the major issues which, which for us is important is that digital skills are a subset of what uh, I like to call STEM skills. More particularly, uh, we, we know that technology transformation is there and 80% of the technology which will be used in 10 years time has not yet been invented. But what we know is that uh, they will have to be implemented by 80% of people already in activity. So it shows the importance to prepare our young generation to uh, how to learn, how to be uh, adaptable, how to be flexible. We also know that 50% of current jobs worldwide around 30% in Europe will disappear in 25 years. And nine out of 10 jobs will require digital skills. If you have these findings and elements coming from any research study, you have to compare that to, the, to another finding that 44% of the EU population, ages between 16 and 74, lack basic digital skills. And then we have to question ourselves whether we go towards a new social divide. And in that context, it is quite important that our education institutions prepare students and teachers for these rapid economic and social changes. And therefore, STEM education is just at the center of this technology transformation. If we look at the recurrent STEM issues, we have two major elements. One is the increased disinterest among young students to take up STEM studies. And the second one is the difficulties to attract STEM graduates for STEM jobs. We know that it's a complex issue. It has been identified more than 10 years ago and all our ministries of education, the European Commission through its various program have developed particular national and European STEM education initiatives and projects. The international studies reveal also the situation of performance and for some countries, the preoccupying situation regarding the performance of their students regarding mathematics and science. But it's not enough because high STEM performance does not lead necessarily to a higher level of interest. Therefore, we have to consider to improve the situation. And in order to improve such a situations, it does require to work simultaneously on various dimensions. I would say first, there is the issue of pedagogy. Second, we have the issue of school strategy. Then we should tackle the peer learning exchange between practitioners which can certainly lead to capacity building of teachers, taking into account the preoccupying situation regarding the shortage of STEM teachers in Europe. Then looking at the policy issues, the curriculum, the assessment, and finally, looking at the knowledge of current and future STEM jobs. So I will try in this presentation to, to highlight some of the issue around these six various dimension which have to be tackled. Moving on the issue of pedagogy, um, we have to move from text-based factual recall to 
exploratory learning modes. And that's quite important to, to really consider the, 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 this change which has to take place. Currently, there are quite a lot of progress which has been done regarding inquiry-based science education, but the vast majority of our schools and of STEM teachers are still teaching on uh, how to and to apply some recipes to already known problems. The second aspect is what we can call the contextualization of STEM teaching. What is the relevance of the content to the pupils' lives and future careers? And pupils fail to see how STEM relates to society's current challenges. So to make it simple, there is a necessity to change the approach on how to, to why. And that's where a lot of progress, a lot of training also has to take place at the level of, uh, of our STEM teacher community. Regarding innovative pedagogies as well, we have to take into account new approaches such as project-based learning, collaborative learning, integrated STEM approaches across disciplines. For sure, the special disposition of the classroom will be important and I will raise it just in my next slides regarding the current situation concerning assessment and the contribution and use of technologies. Mentioning the assessment, we are also facing a very interesting paradox nowadays. On one side, we have teachers which encourage students to work together, to use technology, to be creative. And then, just by accident, around two months before the final exams, students are expected to demonstrate what they have learned by sitting in a row and completing a summative assessment in isolation. So that's really an important element which has to be taken into account regarding the first aspect linked to the pedagogy in STEM education. Moving now to the second element of the uh, simultaneous dimensions, the school strategy. It is essential to develop a school STEM strategy and to offer an ecosystem to all our European schools. It should go via cooperation with industry, which should be further developed, but also supporting our guidance counselors for promoting current and future jobs. And that's, that's quite important to highlight the situation regarding guidance counselors, as progressively this activity is taken over by teachers in activity, which are not necessarily properly trained for also ensuring this important function of supporting students and guiding students regarding uh, future STEM jobs. We have implemented at the level of European School Net a STEM school label to guide European schools in increasing young Europeans' interest and skills in STEM subject. We provide the schools with an appropriate ecosystem with all the tools to engage the students' teachers and we offer them this ecosystem where they can assess their situation and develop and advance their whole school strategy. So the STEM school label is organized around seven various dimensions, instruction, professionalization of staff, assessment, school leadership and culture, school infrastructure, connections and curriculum implementation. Through this initiative, there is a possibility to the school to position itself around various levels. And for the time being, we have more than 3,000 schools which are working on their STEM label, and we already awarded more than, than 1,000 labels all over Europe. The third dimension uh, concerns peer learning and exchanging. And we all know and that's why we are here today with more than 1,600 participants, that peer learning and exchanging is of key importance for teachers and school leaders. And having platforms for exchanging the respective practice is really something essential. I mentioned here in this slide, of course, the community of schools in Europe, which is a twinning community. But today we are speaking around the Scientix, which is a community for science education in Europe, supported also by the 
STEM Alliance, which is a private public initiative initiated by European School Net, its ministries of education, as well as major uh, comp uh, private companies in order to work on this issue of STEM education. Scientix is, and I, I don't want to go too much in detail as I saw in the program that Ageda will share with you all what has been achieved within Scientix, but it has been created as uh, in a first stage as a place where we should offer to the science teacher community a place where all projects could be presented and, 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 uh, and we can give access to all these projects to the STEM teacher community in Europe. Scientix is a is a community for science education in Europe. It supports, it trains, it connects, it shares, and there are quite a lot of various activities which are proposed and which will be continued in 2023. Moving now to the fourth element and the fourth dimension, which maybe is one of the most important dimension, and it concerns the capacity building of teachers and also we have to raise the shortage of STEM teachers in Europe. Starting on the challenges of teachers. Uh, first, there are four elements which are quite interesting to, to highlight. The first one is age. We are facing an aging population. We have one third of our teachers, which are more than 50 years old. And in some countries, that's more than half of them. And there is a gap between students and teachers, which is growing as well. Second, technology. STEM development in industry and research is moving quite very quickly, while our curriculum and the way we teach technologies, science disciplines, is not moving as fast as the situation in industry. Training. STEM teachers require ongoing professional training, and particularly primary school teachers. And finally, vocation. There is less and less candidates for becoming STEM teachers. We are facing in Europe quite a lot of shortages of mathematics teachers, science teachers in quite a lot of countries. But we have also one question to raise. Does a STEM teacher exist in Europe? In industry, we have STEM jobs. We speak about STEM needs. We, st we speak about STEM skills. In school, except the primary school, we have disciplines teachers. We have a math teacher, physics teacher, technology teacher, but there is no STEM teacher at the secondary level of our education systems. So it means that we should develop more cooperation between teachers and we should find ways of developing what we call integrated STEM teaching. The STEAM IT project has proposed a STEAM IT framework, a European, and that's the first European integrated STEM teaching framework that I encourage you to have a look the, as it will support you on a different way of teaching STEM in your various disciplines. We need more, more support for STEM teachers. First, there should be a new approach to STEM teaching, and I already mentioned inquiry-based science education approaches. There is an importance to motivate and to recognize the, 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 the teacher community. We also should consider formal and informal approaches to STEM education. There are quite a lot of activities which are taking place outside of the school time and which are of key importance for motivating students. I will come back to that a little bit later. How to adjust pedagogy how to integrate role models, how to provide resources and authenticity and contextualization of STEM teaching. It's quite important that we can provide all these resources and access to this information to a STEM teacher community. Also, that's quite important that we could identify good practices, but even more importantly, transferable good practices. And from time to time, when we, when we reflect about mainstreaming issues, um, we always consider we have to see why it works very well in an environment and how can we replicate this. But the issue of mainstreaming is not only replicating something which happened in place. So the main issue is to mainstream the process which led to this 
innovative approach which has been developed. And finally, rewarding teachers who are innovating, either via competitions, particular community of practice, or other incentives. It is important that our STEM teacher community could be recognized and rewarded. Uh, it leads me to move to the fifth dimension, the policy issues. And what we face currently is that curricula are overstaffed with factual content, and more and more topics are added in the program while very few are removed, which makes the challenge of the STEM teacher on a daily basis very complex and very complicated. The second point is that all exciting STEM activities are organized outside the school time. And one of the challenge we will have is to find a way that we can embed all these external activities, such as activities developed in science clubs, uh, and generally it's uh, organized either during the lunch time or after the school time. It is important that all these activities could be embedded into the curriculum. So what are the, the areas for change in our education systems? We all know that, in, that our education systems are organized around three major pillars. First one is uh, teaching processes and the pedagogy. Second one is a curriculum. And the third one is the assessment. And what we have learned from the COVID-19 and from the pandemics is the following. Uh, teaching processes are affected by use of technology. And what is important is to reflect on the pedagogical use of education technology, which leads our teacher to have a new role. And the teacher is not only transmitting knowledge, but that's also an orchestrator of the learning process. And what matters is also to identify those new activities where the use of educational technologies is important and can make a difference. On the curriculum, the lessons we learn is, and we question ourselves, do we ask too much from our schools? And quite a lot of teachers faced uh, difficulties for following the curriculum when they had to teach at distance in these emergency remote teaching modes. Are we realistic in terms of curriculum? Should we consider new domains to be considered, particularly educate students to be more autonomous? So there are quite a lot of issues uh, and, and challenges regarding the, uh, the change and the evolution of our curriculum in all our countries. And finally, um, we noticed that the third pillar, which didn't change for many years, suddenly during the COVID-19 changed immediately. There has been a lot of changes made at the national exam situation because the, the, the situation of the pandemia imposed uh, changes to be done. And we have to take that as an opportunity. We have to question how should students learn? What should be the new assessment models? Uh, how can we capture what is really key to be assessed? How to integrate new formative assessment approach? What is the role of learning analytics and artificial intelligence in any evaluation processes? So that's quite a lot of situation and challenges linked to the areas for change in our education systems. I would like to move to my last uh, dimension on the knowledge of current and future jobs. STEM jobs are, are important to be known at the level of uh, guidance counselors. And as, as I was mentioning in my introduction, the guidance counselor function generally is organized by teachers who are willing to add these activities on top of their teaching activities. And we have to support them and we have to train them. Industry also plays an important role on the contextualization of STEM teaching, on the role models, and all of that has to contribute to the attractiveness of current and future STEM jobs. Uh, the STEAM IT project has created a career advisor network and there is a handbook for career advisors, and I encourage you also to, to have a look to this, where we have to prepare our guidance counselors 
to be aware of the current jobs, but also to be prepared of what the future STEM jobs will be. As an example, there are quite a lot of jobs that did not exist 10 years ago, such as an app developer, driverless car engineer, cloud computing specialist, etc. And if you look at these slides on the top 10 skills of 2025 compared to the top 10 skills in 2020 and 2015, there are not so many changes you can notice as we are all concerned by complex problem solving, critical thinking, active learning and learning strategies. So one could question, what should be the skills for the future? Certainly decision making, multitasking, creative problem solving, collaboration and communication. But all these skills which are called uh, 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 as 21st century skills are skills which should be added to the basic skills such as STEM skills and basic knowledge in STEM education. Uh, time, time has arrived now as I, I have to respect the time alloc allocated for my intervention to share with you some conclusion. And I would like to share with you the pathways for what could be the pathways for overcoming STEM challenges. So we could identify four different uh, blocks. First, the barriers between subjects. We have to break the barrier between subjects with pragmatic initiatives. We have to encourage collaboration between teachers and guidance counselors. We have to support the global school strategy by supporting um, strategy regarding STEM education at the level of the school itself. And also we have to associate STEM teachers and career advisors. All of this is supported by all the activities offered to our STEM teacher and school community via the Seantix portal. We also have to organize the integrated STEM education framework, and we have to develop this European framework. I mentioned it also at the level of the STEAM IT project, but there is also the importance to continue working on the development of a STEAM education roadmap and the SEER project, which certainly you will know better during these two days of conference. Is an import, will be an important step in the definition of the STEAM Education European Roadmap. And finally, industry education cooperation is of key importance for supporting the contextualization of STEM teaching as well as the emergence and the sharing of role models with young students so they can be attracted by science studies and also future STEM jobs. And in that context, the STEM Alliance is a perfect environment where these exchanges uh, can take place. Five recommendations may be, may be shared. First, it is important to provide more support to the STEM teacher community. It is important to establish and enhance multi-stakeholder partnerships with the local environment, between schools, between schools and industry, and with, with all the environment of the school and the teacher. It is important to enhance and reform STEM curricula, pedagogy and assessment. I already mentioned the, um, the added value of embedding non-formal initiatives in the school activity. And finally, to learn from and build on excellent opportunities. All these mainstreaming processes. What are the specific actions which we might consider? I have identified uh, five, five main building blocks. The first one is linked to the digital competence of teachers on the pedagogy pedagogical use of educational technologies. We have to support capacity building program to support teachers, both at pre and in service levels. And from time to time, we are too much concerned by the professional development of teachers in activity, but we should not forget the preparation of a new teachers. We have to identify those new learning activities where the use of educational technologies is important. And there is a need to provide teachers with all the tools and education solutions. On the innovative pedagogy, there is a need to collect and share innovative practices there is a need to support also innovation in this area 
and I would like to highlight the uh, important role of the edtech startup sector in that context. And certainly, we should consider the emergence of new assessment models. Finally, the organization of the schools where inclusion policies should be revisited. We have to prepare our children to learn online with the associated risks such as privacy and safety. And quite importantly, and we noticed that, especially during the COVID-19 period and situation, the link with local communities and for primary schools, especially with parents. On the policy developments, we learned that stronger and closer monitoring systems may should be considered, that curriculum and adaptation also should be considered with more emphasis to digital competence and autonomy, and also that at policy level, new evaluation mechanisms should be considered. At the European level, exchanging experience at European level is quite important. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I arrive here at the end of my presentation. I would like to wish you a very successful conference in the next days to come and to thank you for your dedication for all the STEM education uh, or all the STEM teachers community. And we are sure that through the Scientix portal, the STEM Alliance initiative, we will continue to improve the STEM education uh, situation, to continue to innovate on STEM education pedagogical practices, and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you for your attention.